today I just want to talk about all of the things that have been ruined on this planet by rich people. That's right, this is just a fun little video where I'm going to talk about every cool thing from the past that rich people have basically ruined. So the first thing obviously is any kind of possible hobby where there is potential profit. So you got people now that go out and they like ruin Pokemon cards. Not because they're into Pokemon or they like the cards, but because they read stories about how rare the cards are. So they just dump endless piles of cash into getting every card and then they hoard them and so no one else can have them and it just drives the value down, it drives the mysteriousness down, it just ruins it for everybody. It can be like the same with like a, people with massive comic book collections who don't even care about comics or the lore or the source material. They just collect it because it's valuable. And like what about scalpers or resellers, okay? You can sit there and wait in line for days for like a new game or a system release but then some guy is going to go grab 800 copies of the newest game, put it on his eBay storefront, and then jack up the price by eight times the amount. I mean, for example, like, like recently, okay, uh, like Pokemon 1, there was limited edition Pokemon sleeves. It was sold, th there was a pack of 80 for like, uh, like $8 or something, right? And, um, but if you go on eBay like three days after it came out, it's $8 for a single sleeve. So that guy made $640 if they sold every sleeve at $8 each. And it's just, uh, it was just a single $8 purchase, and, and the people that actually want to play the game or collect the cards, they're out of luck because some rich guy just bought them all and is hoarding them all, and you're forced to pay the, the now jacked up price from the scalpers. And you may think, well, that's the seller's fault. Why not do what Japan does and run a lottery? But okay, here's the thing, right? In Japan, whenever there is limited edition releases, what they do is they'll give everyone that's waiting in line a ticket. And it and they'll run a low lottery, and if you're you know you, you the number is called, hey, you get the you get the privilege to purchase a, a a box, right? But people will just bring their babies, or scalper groups will just get their friends and family that have no intention of the hobby, pay them to stand in line with them, and then they hey, they all get a lottery ticket. So at the end of the day, the scalpers are still getting all of the goods. And like a year ago, these rich people they pay black hat hackers and programmers to make these special programs. They will automatically scan Amazon, eBay, Newegg, all the tech sites for the newest GPU. Do you remember this? Like back in back in like a couple years ago, the 3080 like graphics card. Nvidia line would would be automatically sold out there. People would live stream these bots. They would just scan every website as soon as one was available, and then a bot would immediately place an order for it. It's insane. It's I, I know people were using that to like mine crypto and stuff, but it's still ridiculous just how much power the rich people have over simple basic hobbies where they shouldn't even be bothering with. And I used to work retail, and and this is something that not so much rich people do, but uh, they are basically feeding rich people, right? And I've been approached by some of these people too. It's like whenever a new product is coming up out, they will approach us and be like, "Hey, I will pay you money under the table in." secret if you hold product in the back for me so that I can claim it and I'll share with you some of the profits once I sell it on eBay. People did this to me back when the Harry Potter books were coming out. I don't know the last time a Harry Potter book released. It was a really long time ago. I think I was still a teenager, but uh, I had people doing that to me and it was it was wild and uh, I didn't take it because I was like a yes man goody two shoes idiot, but but now that I think back, it's like, I should have took those deals, because that was some good money, but the thing is, if I did that, then there would be some actual Harry Potter fans that waited in line all night at my store, and uh, I didn't own the store, I just worked there, by the way, and, and they would have been so heartbroken and so sad, and it's just like, well, I'm, I'm kind of glad that I didn't do it, but I, I really could have used the money, but still, it's something rich people ruin. All right, the next one would be cars and vehicles, okay? As a very poor person, way under the poverty line myself, I literally make half of what people make for minimum wage in, in in like the lowest form of minimum wage, okay? Not those rich Californians with their $15 an hour McDonald's minimum wage. No, I'm talking like like half of $7 an hour, basically. That's how much I make doing this. But I don't do this for the money. I do it to leave something behind when I die. That's why I do YouTube. Anyway, enough about that. So cars, like 80s and 90s cars, these are always like beater cars, old cars with like 200,000 miles on the odometer and stuff like that. These are the cars that someone like me, who's poor, can maybe possibly quite sort of save up for and afford, right? So if I need a vehicle, I could, you know, used to, I could go out and go buy a car made in the 90s for a couple thousand dollars, but not anymore because all of the rich people are buying them and fixing them up and storing them and hoarding them and collecting them like car collectors, like they, you know, the, the old 90s vehicles. There, there's like a, because, you know, back in their day, they couldn't afford them, but now that they're rich, they can. And it's leaving people like me who just need to afford a cheap, basic car 
you know, it, we're out of luck because all the rich people have bought all the old beaters. Like, uh, you know, rich people ruin things like Burning Man. Okay, I don't go to Burning Man. That's like an American. Th I think it's in America. But uh, like, for instance, that was like a whole counterculture thing that people did. It was like, screw the rich. They go out in the desert and they have a good time or whatever. But now, like, I've read stories where like Mark Zuckerberg will be helicoptered into Burning Man and he will get to stay in his billionaire camp filled with air conditioned mobile homes. And it kind of ruins the fun of Burning Man if you just do that. It's like, it's like he's griefing Burning Man by just flexing his money and, uh, you know, everyone's out in the, the desert heat or whatever, just like dying of thirst. And he's in there in his, you know, air conditioned little mobile home unit. Now, I don't know about every part of the world, but, um, I, I think it's not an American issue, but beaches, okay. Rich people will buy up beach property, beach fronts, just the beach itself. Then they will build a giant wall around it and either charge people or block it off completely. This happened a lot in Jamaica. It, like if you go, try to go to the beach in Jamaica, it's either in like a dangerous illegal part of the land because of, you know, cliffs and rocks and you know, whatever, but other, other ones, there's just walls just erected the entire way around the beach and even into the ocean. And you have to go all the way on the, around this wall, pay to get in. And it, you know, it's not that much, but it's still, you pay to get into what, sit on the beach or splash around in the water for a little bit. And then, and then if you leave, you got to pay to get back in. It's just, it's just stupid. It's so dumb. And there's a lot of parts of the world that are suffering this way, but uh, I think some beaches in America are just, like, public or something. I'm not sure how it works in America, but, yeah, I think they have public beaches there. So, food is another one. Obviously, food has been going up, like, an insane amount. But um, even, like, really cheap and simple food, like ramen or tacos and, and even, like, sushi. Like, years ago, sushi was, like, 2 to $3. And now uh, you can get sushi for 8 to $10. It, like, tripled. It's crazy. Like, bacon went up. Bacon used to be, like, a dollar a pound. And now it's, like, 7 or $8. It's from a freaking pig. What's the deal with that i mean come on even like little homage like like food things like little food trucks like a little taco food truck you know you used to just go there one dollar for you know a quick little taco some onions some meat some cilantro a little bit of sauce and you're good to go but now that's like five to twenty dollars for a single for a single fucking i'm not even kidding a single taco at some of these fancy food trucks twenty dollars no way screw you i'm not ever gonna pay twenty dollars for a taco and what about food that no one ever liked like skirt steak used to be one of the cheapest cuts of steak now it's ten dollars a pound pork shoulder oxtail remember when oxtail was like literally given away at grocery stores because no one wanted it uh, and, and just like beef bones now it's beef bone marrow and it's super expensive it's ridiculous thanks food network also short ribs uh pork belly that's another one these things took a long time to cook so people generally didn't buy them but now they're like four times more expensive also thrift stores i don't know what it is i i guess the wealthy people just want to buy out all the expensive things or maybe the internet ruined this one but thrift stores used to be mega cheap you can go get like you know two work shirts a couple pairs of work pants pay 15 dollars and you're good to go not anymore a lot of these thrift stores use online auctions if anything of value gets put into these thrift stores they go immediately to their website and sold just it's just it's all business now like you can just go buy a brand new set of clothing for that you'll find in the thrift stores for maybe five or ten dollars more it's guaranteed to be clean new fresh the fabric isn't going to be torn or worn out oh and like flea markets or merchant markets okay this is where people just go to sell mostly stolen and shoplifted goods but let's be real right you like I used to in my in my youth I could go there and I knew what games were rare and maybe the shopkeepers didn't or other people didn't and I could go and I could buy like an official Nintendo NES baseball game for the regular Nintendo and you know for a dollar and then I'd go to a pawn shop or a collector and then I could get 20 to 60 dollars from it right but now because everyone has smartphones and everyone is basically going there to try to make money like like I was years ago as a kid uh, then like like it's just ruined it. They just they literally have algorithms where they you can like Like wave your phone over someone's market stall and it'll tell you Oh, this is worth this amount. This is worth this amount. Don't pay more than this blah 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 Like some sort of shopping app or something now I'm not a sports fan and, and I haven't been to like a sporting event in I don't know about 10 15 years but um, apparently now it's insanely, insanely expensive to go to a sporting event. Okay, I remember when I used to work in a retail store, me and all my coworkers would go to a baseball game and it cost us like $10 a seat. 
and, uh, you know, maybe a couple bucks in gas or whatever. But now, apparently, it's like $250 for a seat. It's like, what the hell? That's like almost, that, that's at the time would have been our entire paycheck for the week. There's no way we could ever afford that. We'd have to save up for months to see, what, a, a, a little crappy baseball game? Like, who cares? Like, I'm not even into sports. I just went to hang out with people and talk and eat some hot dogs. Y you know, back when the hot dogs were a dollar, and if you go to the sporting events now, you buy a hot dog, it's probably like $12, and then you're going to need a drink and that's another eight dollars like what what the hell and then you have housing okay housing and even rental places everyone's flipping houses housing is the number one rich person investment they buy up entire neighborhoods of houses and they just sit empty yeah people go and squat in them and get kicked out or whatever but like like if you want to actually rent one of these houses or buy one of these houses you're gonna pay way 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 too much and they're all flipped with like bare bones stuff you go inside and you look at the molding you look at the the shelves and and the furniture that's used the closet like support beams and crap it's all the bare cheapest crappiest stuff that you can possibly buy and they're charging like four hundred thousand dollars for it and like i don't want a luxury home i just want a regular home just a bare basic minimum freaking tier two rust base okay just tier two just a little log cabin or something I mean, come on just make it out of wood i mean at this point I'll, I'll take a minecraft dirt hut i don't care just something man but no that i guarantee you minecraft dirt hut oh wow this is really aesthetic that would be 200 grand please and and now i am not an alcoholic i don't drink alcohol but i have heard craft beers are now like a rich people thing okay i used to remember like the the big name brands of beer uh, is you know would be a certain price and then these craft beers these locally sourced made beers would be like half as expensive and people would be like oh this is just the cheap stuff right but now it became this weird hipster rich people thing and the craft beers are like three times or four times as expensive as the generic name brand you know the, the national brand beers okay so this one is entirely localized in thailand okay so thailand back in the day it used to be like a backpack as paradise Used to be able to like stay in huts near the beach, eat local family restaurants, and now it is entirely just five star spa resort hotels, international chains, businesses. It is, it's really hard for the locals. And this is because in Thailand, there's not a law against monopolies. So like just a few rich people can bully the entire community and just drive them out of business. It's so sad. And then there's a law where uh, foreigners can actually uh, own land and properties if they pay like a fee or something. So of course, Chinese billionaires are swooping in and just taking over the entire, like they don't even need to go to war with Thailand when China can just literally buy all the property and then oh, hey it's basically china now i don't know if this happens everywhere else but basically like in a part of town that i knew there used to be this really nice big park in the center of the city and uh, everyone would go there's really nice open space you can take your kids take your dogs enjoy the fresh air have a nice walk look at all the flowers and you know ponds and geese and stuff and then the people that live nearby were obviously super rich and part of that like part of town and uh, what what they did was they didn't like that there was noise coming from the park and all the you know plebeians in their neighborhood essentially. So what they did is they, ev they eventually bought it from the city basically somehow, and then they walled the entire thing off, and then they made it where you can't even get into that park without actually living in that specific neighborhood. So what happened was people stopped going to it because the rich people didn't care to go to it, and well everyone else wasn't allowed to go to it. So, uh, the money that was all spent there and to build it up and, and you know, stuff, they, they added fountains and a bunch of little children play areas and redid the flower beds, but because no one was going there, there was no money going to it, and because it was privately owned, you know, people weren't paying for any of the attractions or the food stands or anything, they got all set up in there to nickel and dime everybody, which was kind of the point. Um, you know, the whole place just fell into disrepair, complete, absolute ruin, and uh, even if you live in that neighborhood, that rich people neighborhood, you can't go there because it's completely fell apart. It's it's you know it's condemned. It is just dangerous. Okay, so they took the or they took the nice park away from everybody, and then they neglected it until it became a crap hole in the middle of the city, and now no one can enjoy it. Now I know I covered uh, housing and rental stuff earlier in this video, but there's another plague too, and that is. Uh, in certain cities in certain parts of the world, the city can vote if new housing developments can be built, if more houses can be built, if housing areas can be like, you know, sectioned off for the city. And once a bunch of rich people move into a city, they don't want more people in their city. So they always use their money, influence, power 
uh, to, to go to these like town hall meetings, the city council meetings, whatever they're called. And they just strike it down so that none of these can ever be built again. And it basically lets them have a monopoly on living there where no one else can possibly move in and, and hang out with them. It's really messed up. And then they destroyed the middle class's ability to just live comfortably on a single wage. Everyone knows that like in the 40s, 50s, 60s, that's how it was. The man went to work and the wife stayed home and the kids and blah, 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 blah. And they lived in a nice fancy house. That's never coming back. But like, here's the thing too, is instead of everyone banding together to fight, you know, the 1% or whatever, everyone's just fighting each other at the bottom. It's like you have the, the construction worker. He works 12 hours a day. He makes $16 an hour and he hates his job. And uh, he goes to all the city council meetings where they're trying to be like, hey, let the McDonald's worker make $15 an hour. And they're like, no, I break my back doing construction every day. How dare they make $15 an hour when I make 16 an hour? That's unfair. And so it never really happens in those parts of the world, right? I know it does in some, but in, in most it, it doesn't, okay? So what, what the construction worker doesn't realize is that if McDonald's workers start making that $15 an hour, then he can go to his boss and be like, why am I working here making $16 an hour when I can just go flip burgers for $15 an hour? Uh, so I want to, I want to get paid more. So <laughs> instead of fighting each other, they should be helping each other out. And, but, but that's a whole different ball game. That's a whole different video topic. And it's even crept its way into video games. Okay. They found, they found a method to sell unfinished games, but they min max the microtransactions, the skins, uh, and some companies are a little bit better, but the really big ones, you know, the AAA ones, that's all about the money. It's all they care about with as little effort as possible. I like, like take for instance, uh, like the Witcher. Okay. You have like the Witcher. I, I don't know any of the Witcher games. They have little expansions, little DLC is $19. It's like a, it's like a huge chunk of extra gameplay. Lots of hours, lots of fun. I've never played the Witcher by the way. And then you have, uh, Fallout 76. You can pay $18 and you can get your power armor painted white with like a flag on it or something for $18. Okay, that's ridiculous. That's insane. That's super stupid. Oh, and what about theme parks? I remember going to theme parks as a kid, even as a teenager. And, uh, you know, it, it, gone are the days where everyone is was of equal value and you had to wait in line regardless of how much you made. But now the rich people can pay extra money and skip the line and make your day longer and their day shorter all because they're willing to pay more money. It's stupid. Also, like the Internet, YouTube in general, YouTube's a big one. I always complain about YouTube. You know, I'm I'm one of the, the old school YouTubers. I'm not doing it for money or profit. Right. Uh, but remember the days when people just made stuff that was dumb and funny just because they could not because it's their job not because they have to put out content with mid-roll ads and sponsor segments and i can't control the mid-roll ads i'm sorry guys uh it, you know and, and 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 all the other stupid things like like there's so many youtube channels that are corporately made there are so many people that hire editors hire script writers hire thumbnail makers and stuff i get approached every day by companies for these services and i'm like what the hell i'm just a a dude who likes to play video games and and use it as a scrapbook for knowledge that's all my channel is it's just a scrapbook of me making videos and how to do stuff in a video game. So 10 years later, I don't have to relearn it all over again. I can just watch my old videos and be like, oh yeah, that's how I can farm a million silver per hour in Albion Online or something like that, right? But now it's just like, okay, we got to do the sponsored segment. We got to do the podcast. We got to show the t-shirts. It's like, oh my God. So I was in a discord talking about this with some other people, you know, and one person told me this is, this is wild. I didn't know this existed, but rich people will hire handicapped people to be part of their family. So when they go to Disney World, they have someone in a wheelchair, which will let them skip the line and get loaded all into the ride together with the rest of the people. And uh, it's as wild. And, and, and I kind of I kind of know where this is coming from. But that's just such a weird, sick thing to do. <laughs> like, what the who does this? Who thinks of this stuff? Okay, so I actually had to look this up because I couldn't believe it. And apparently, uh, you're not. You, this doesn't work anymore. This is something people used to do. It doesn't work. You don't think you can go to Disneyland and pay someone in a wheelchair a hundred bucks for the day to follow you around. It's not gonna work, okay? But like that kind of also ruins it for the people who are legitimately with their families in a wheelchair. Now they can't skip the line. It's I don't know. It's <laughs> now this one is more personal. This is like okay, college, okay. 
The rich killed the market for low-income students, and then they gutted tuition assistance programs. They turned them into loan sharking, basically. And honestly, it's always been a way to filter out the poor. Let me explain, okay? So basically, the bar used to be set at you get a degree in, in any decent field, and you'll be in line for a good job. That's what that's a lie they've always told you. And then, whenever that got settled, they moved the goalpost, and they said, oh, well, now you need the degree, but you also need experience. So people, you know, they worked, they interned, they got the degrees, and so on. And, you know, there's still a lot of poor people that have not been able to fit their cog into the machine, but they moved it yet again, and now they're like, well, this is an entry-level job, so you're going to need a degree, you're going to need several certifications, you're going to need middle-level experience, five references, and we're going to pay you the same amount of wages if you worked at a retail store. Have fun. It's always been a filter for poor people. Also, walking. Walking got ruined by rich people. You can't really walk anywhere anymore. You have to drive everywhere. You're never going to get there efficiently. Okay, so let's wrap this up one more because I can go on all day about this topic. But camping. Okay, last time I got invited out to, to camping was many years ago. But uh, whenever I learned that the campers were going to be bringing RVs with large screen TVs, full size fridges, full of airy amenity and, you know, gas powered cooking utensils, like, well, this isn't camping. I thought camping was we go chop some wood, we build a campfire and we sleep in little tents. And they were like, no, 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 no. That's like some sort of weird like woodsman crap, dude. I got all this stuff here set up. So it's like, what's the point? I mean, it's just like you're spending the night what away from the city in, a, in an RV. Wow. <laughs> Anyway, like, that's all I've got. I'm Swole Benji. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. As always, be a bro. Stay swole. Uh, leave a like if you want videos every day. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss tomorrow's video. If you want to help me out financially, click the join button down below to become a channel member. Five bucks a month gets you access to private, more personal videos. They're useful if you play Albion online, I guess. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. On screen right now is a video you should absolutely click. Go ahead and give that a click. I'll see you tomorrow. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Also, join the Discord. Link in the description. Thanks. See ya.